January 10, 2014, on Friday, 11.59 p.m. Pacific Time. And this is your U.S.-Canada Radiation Report. Let's begin with the first report from ENA News, ABC, in Fukushima. Radiation to be at U.S. coast early this year. Expert concerned about effects on food chain from unprecedented amount of migrating radioactivity. They tried to stop leaks. It's just not working. TEPCO said we don't know what's gone into the ocean. And this is a video. It was published January 10, 2014 at 12.12 a.m. Eastern Time by e and &E News. ABC News Nightline, January 9, 2014, Part 1 at 8 o'clock in. Cecilia Vega, ABC News with Nightline producer Nick Capote. Will you ever know how much contaminated water has made its way from this power plant into that ocean? Kenichiro Matsui from TEPCO said it's very difficult to give an accurate number. Part 2 at 2.30 in. Vega says, a lot of cesium you just found. Radiation expert Dr. Shinzo Kimura says it's just what he, he expected, or suspected rather. Levels off Fukushima are still one that should be 1,000 times, I believe, higher than the, before the meltdown, and the effects of long-term exposure for people and the environment are still unknown. Ken Busselaer, senior scientist at Woodhull's Oceanographic Institution. We've seen TEPCO for two and a half years trying to stop leaks, trying to decontaminate. It's just not working. We've never had this much radioactivity released accidentally into the ocean. So now the question is, how long will it take to work through to the land? to the ocean from the power plant into the sea life and across the Pacific. Vegas said some of that radiation is predicted to reach American shores early this year. The levels are expected to be very low. Busseler says I think the fear of what's happening outside the local area has been exaggerated. For Americans to worry about swimming on our beaches when I can swim here I think is overblown. Vegas says what does concern him? how this unprecedented amount of migrating radiation will affect the food chain. And you can watch the two-part broadcast right here if you wish. And let's go to the next report. Just a moment. Professor's Diary says Fukushima radioactive material has reached the west coast as of June 2013 by ocean transport. Health risks to be determined by ongoing monitoring. This was published January 10, 2014 at 12.16 p.m. Eastern Time by e, e News. J.T. Cullen, Associate Professor of Marine Chemistry at the University of Victoria. Daily Cause Diary, January 4, 2014. Fukushima derived cesium has reached the West Coast as of June 2013 by ocean transport but the concentrations of cesium continue to be well below levels thought to pose environmental or public health threats. There have been a number of popular press articles that report the timing of the arrival of the radionuclides but offer no perspective on the actual levels and the associated risk to residents of the West Coast. About 93% of radioactivity in seawater results from the presence of primordial, naturally occurring potassium-40 and rubidium-87. The remaining 7% are radioactive elements deposited to the ocean from past atmospheric nuclear testing. Fukushima-derived cesium was detected all the way to the coast in June 2013 with the highest levels of cesium-137 farthest offshore, roughly 0.006% of background radiation, and lower levels of 0.0003 becquerels a liter towards the coast. Ongoing monitoring will constrain the likely environmental and health risks posed by ocean transport of Fukushima-derived radion nuclides. Note the professor changed the units to becquerels a liter for cesiums 134 and 137 instead of using Becquerel's M3 as the source document, and that's a PDF file right here. The, amount, uh, the above amounts must be multiplied by 1,000 to get Becquerel's M3. In addition, the figures provided by the professor appear to be inaccurate. 
Number one, according to the source document, it's Cesium's 137, not Cesium's 137. Well, excuse me, Cesium's 134, not Cesium's 137, that measured 0 0.9 becquerels M3 or 0 0.0009 0 becquerels a liter if you modify the units like the, the professor. Number two, the professor writes that in June 2013, there were lower levels of 0 0.0003 becquerels a liter towards the coast. This amount is not in the measurements for 2013. The only mention of it was in 2012. Levels of 137 cesiums equal to 0 0.3 becquerels M3 measured at STA P26 in 2012. Last month in a Vancouver area newspaper, Professor Cullen wrote the following. The natural level of radioactivity on average in the oceans is about 13 becquerels a liter against which radioactivity resulting from human activities and disasters should always be discussed. What is the basis of this claim that natural radioactivity levels should always be discussed when radioactivity resulting from human activities is mentioned? In the ocean and human body, different radion nuclides have different fate and toxicity. According to Woodhull's Oceanographic Institutions, senior scientist Ken Buselaer, who mentions his ability to be quoted in media reports downplaying Fukushima-related data. Also be aware that fish can bioconcentrate cesium-137 at a rate of 100 times the level found in the surrounding water. For seals and sea lions, it's up to 1,000 times, and the source is IAEA. For information regarding health risks, you can also see this report by Gunderson regarding not eating the Pacific Ocean fish. And that's going to do it for a U.S. Canada radiation report. Thanks for watching and please stay safe. Pink out.